Good morning. My name is Jillian and I'm on the creative team at the Boston Tea Party Ships and Museum. Like all of the other museums in Massachusetts, we are currently closed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We share the hopes that we'll be bringing history back to you as soon as we can. So, while we wait for the day when our doors can finally reopen, let's use our 21st century technology to bring the 18th century back to you. Let's begin, shall we? All right, let's start with the what. What happened? Well, the Sons of Liberty destroyed 340 chests of the East India Company tea by breaking open the chests with axes and hatchets. The contents inside of the tea chests were poured out over the sides of the vessels and emptied into Boston Harbor. The remaining tea chests were tossed into Boston Harbor soon after. Now, all of the tea that was tossed into Boston Harbor was in loose leaf form, like this. This is some loose leaf hyson tea here. Overall, the total amount in weight of the tea that was destroyed on the night of December 16th was 92,616 pounds of tea, approximately 42,000 kilograms or 46 tons. The value in 1773 was about 10,000 pounds sterling, which roughly today equates to about $1.3 million. And there were five different varieties of tea which were thrown overboard that night. My personal favorite being Hyson. When did this event happen? The Boston Tea Party took place on December 16th, 1773. That's in the 18th century. Though the meetings about the tea lasted for weeks, December 16th was the final date in which the colonists could decide what to do about the tea out in the harbor. Around 5.45 in the evening, when word from the governor arrived to Old South Meeting House, stating that they could not send the tea back to England, well, that's when the real action began. At about 6 to 6.30, the Patriots stormed outside of Old South Meeting House and down to Griffin's Wharf. The whole destruction of the tea lasted about three to three and a half hours. Who participated in the Boston Tea Party? Now it's estimated that about 100 to 150, about 30 to 50 men per ship, were actively involved in the destruction of the tea. Over a thousand citizens of Boston and people from neighboring townships watched from the shoreline. Many of the participants were skilled craftsmen and their apprentices. Others appear to have been men of prominent social standing, such as merchants or doctors. Now, many of these men donned a disguise this evening, some using lamp black or soot to smear on their faces, concealing their identities. Others wore cloaks or blankets over their clothing. Now, some men also wore a disguise thought to symbolize the Mohawk Nation, though, as far as research can tell, there were no actual Mohawks or Native Americans who participated in this event at all. At this time in the 18th century, the American colonies were often represented by an image of a Native American figure, an image unique to the North American colonies. The colonists appropriated this image as a symbol of unity, strength, and fierceness. And it's even noted that this evening, some people didn't disguise themselves at all and made an effort to not hide their identities. That being said, as this event was an act of secrecy, it is said that the men involved took a vow of secrecy to never disclose any of the names of anyone who participated. Any list of names to this day is incomplete, and an actual number is really just an estimate. Where did this meeting occur? Now, the final meeting to decide the fate of the tea happened at Boston's Old South Meeting House, which still stands to this day. Around the conclusion of the meeting, an unknown number of men from the Meeting House and other neighborhoods of Boston stormed three ships docked at Griffin's Wharf, the Dartmouth, the Eleanor, and the Beaver. Though Griffin's Wharf is no longer in existence today, Boston's Intercontinental Hotel and neighboring Independence Wharf make up the approximate location. The Boston Tea Party Ships and Museum is located within 30 yards of this location, over the very same body of water in which the tea was destroyed. I'll drink to that. How did this happen? Well, the men gathered at Griffin's Wharf and boarded three vessels, the Eleanor, the Dartmouth, and the Beaver. They intimidated any of the customs officers into leaving or stepping aside, 
and demanded that the captains and their mates grant them access to the ship holds. That way, they would have access to the tea. The men assured the captains that no harm would come to any of the crews or any of the other cargo, provided that no one tried to keep them from their business or stop them from destroying the tea. Men jumped down into the holds of the ship. They proceeded to hoist the tea chests up above, where they were taken over to the sides of the vessels, cracked open with axes or hatchets, and then the contents was dumped into Boston Harbor, making sure to scrape all that loose leaf tea out. As the tide was very low, many of the young men or apprentices were sent over the sides of the ship into the mud to stomp the tea leaves down. Everything was done in a pretty orderly manner. And great care was taken to make sure that no tea survived the night and no tea was stolen. When they left, everything was put back into its orderly place. The vessels were swept clean. Finally, one of the most important questions that we get at the Boston Tea Party Ships Museum is this. Why did this event even happen? Well, first, you have to understand that at the time of the Boston Tea Party, Americans were actually British citizens. Massachusetts Bay Colony was a colony of Great Britain. For years, a conflict had been building between Parliament and the American colonies regarding Parliament's authority over them. You may have heard of other previous parliamentary efforts, things such as the Stamp Act, or the Townsend Acts. Well, the Tea Act of 1773 gave new life to the debate. Under this new law, the East India Company could sell tea to the American colonies at a lower price than competitors. This cheaper tea would encourage people to buy it, and thus give legitimacy to the American tea duty of three pennies per pound, which was still left over from a few years prior of the Townsend Acts of 1767. Patriots feared that what they saw was an East India Company monopoly, as well as another parliamentary tax without their consent. Boston Patriots demanded that the ship's owners return their tea to England without being unloaded, but they also began a plan in response should the government officials refuse their demands, men like Governor Thomas Hutchinson, whose two sons were involved in this East India Company tea scheme. Ultimately, customs officials and Governor Hutchinson claimed that it was out of their authority to allow the tea to leave unless the tax was paid upon it. Seeing no other option to prevent the tea from reaching colonial markets, the Boston Sons of Liberty boarded the three vessels and dumped the tea into Boston Harbor. Huzzah! Well, friends, that just about wraps up the basic 101 version of the Boston Tea Party. Of course, we could talk much more in depth about each of these points that we've mentioned, and frankly, we will in the days to come. Please feel free to get back to us about what you want to hear about. Write us a comment below with any questions or suggestions that you might have. And again, thank you for joining us this morning. We hope to be bringing you more information about the Boston Tea Party during this time of closure. But please stay safe out there. Remember, wash your hands for at least 20 seconds, practice good social distancing, and do your best to stay at home. Thanks again for joining us, and stay tuned for more. Bye, everyone! Bye.